The Honourable Member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to quote one of the world's most credible news organizations on financial and economic matters. The Financial Times of London, May 10th, 2024. The headline, Breakdown Nations Like Canada Have a Lesson for the World. Canada leads nations which have suffered a sharp decline in per capita GDP. Simple question. Does the government agree that Canada leads nations that have suffered a sharp decline in per capita GDP? Wow. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. What the government agrees with is that Canada was the first G7 country to lower interest rates for the first time. Canada was Gosh, such a freaking G7 condescending, G7 rotten undertone when she talks. Time. And Canada was the first G7 country to lower interest rates for a third time. The government also knows that wages in Canada have outpaced inflation for 19 months in a row. And meanwhile, inflation, 2% in August, has been within the Bank of Canada's target range. Yeah. Again, I'm going to invite members, please, not to take the floor unless they're being invited to by the chair. The Honourable Member from Halton Hills, Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, the Bank of Canada has become the first central bank to cut rates because Canada has become the first leading economy to go through an economic contraction. Again, the Financial Times, for which the finance minister once worked, it said, quote, Canada's per capita gross domestic product has been shrinking 0.4% a year since 2020, the worst rate for any developed economy in the top 50. Does the government agree? that Canada's per capita GDP is shrinking at the worst rate of any of the top 50 economies. Yeah. Look at the unanimous the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister support from the Conservative bench. Mr. Speaker, our government knows that what matters to Canadians is inflation. And that is why it is so important that inflation was 2% in August and that it has been within the Bank of Canada's target range all of this year. And it is because of that progress that interest rates in Canada have come down three times. That is real oh relief to homeowners. That is real relief to businesses. That is real relief to anyone who wants to buy a home. But all the Canadian, all the Conservatives know how to do is talk Canada down. That's right. She's off her rocker, man. And ask the honourable member from uh, uh, Cal- Dufferin Caledon, please, to uh, hold his uh, time until he has the floor, which I'm, he often does uh, during question period. The honourable member for Mégantic Lérable. Mr. Speaker, it is high time to put an end to this block-backed Liberal government's economic vandalism. Under this Prime Minister, Canada has recorded the worst per capita income growth, or GDP, than under any other Prime Minister since 1930. In fact, Canada has experienced the worst income growth in the G7 since 2015, down 2% in Canada and up 8% in the United States. This means lower standard of living for all Canadians, including seniors who no longer have enough money to pay their rent and bills. When will this Liberal bloc think of seniors and stop its economic vandalism? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. I've Even the translators watch this channel. Really interesting coming from the Conservative side of this House. A few months ago, the only word in the Conservatives' vocabulary seemed to be inflation. But today, we have good news about inflation. In August, inflation was at 2%. And, Mr. Speaker, all throughout this year, inflation has been in the Bank of Canada's target range. Mr. Speaker, that's good news for Canada and for Canadians. But all Conservatives seem to be interested in is the bad news. 
The Honourable Member for Mégantique L'Érable. Well, let's talk about the target range, Mr. Speaker. Seniors, Canadians in general, they're no longer able to put food on the table. Why? Because the cost of housing has increased, the cost of food has increased, the cost of everything is up because of this bloc-supported Liberal government and their decision-making. You know, seniors built Canada and they lived in a Canada that rewarded those who worked hard. Why does the bloc-backed Liberal Party want to continue to vandalize seniors' pensions by raising taxes again and again? I ask the Honourable Member for La Prairie to not speak before being recognized. The Honourable Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we do indeed respect seniors. That's why we've always been there for seniors. But seniors understand, Mr. Speaker, that we also need to invest in the future. Canadians know that. They understand it. That's why we are attracting generational investments. For instance, Moderna, which set up shop in Laval. Nah. In Bécancourt, another Sorry. huge investment. We want to put Quebec at the forefront of the automobile industry just... of the 21st century. And triggering word. Us, thank you. And we thank our workers and they can count on us to build the Canada of tomorrow and the Canada of the 21st century. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Shefford. The Bloc Québécois is using October 29th as a deadline to be an ultimatum on behalf of seniors. Today, Seniors' representatives are here in Ottawa to support our initiative. The FADOC is here, as well as its Morrissey chapter. The AQDR is here. The Udawe AQRP and AREQ are here. The Table de Concertation des Aînés des Laurentides is here. They're all here to demand that we put an end to discrimination against seniors and to demand that we increase OAS by 10% for those 74 and under. They expect a clear answer. Will the government give C319 a royal recommendation? <laughs> The Honourable Minister of Labour and Seniors. Mr. Speaker, I take great pleasure in calling out the Bloc Québécois for its hypocrisy. The member for Shefford, you know, there are 13,300 people in the riding of Shefford eligible for dental care. These people are saving hundreds upon hundreds of dollars thanks to dental care. But the member for Shefford, she voted against dental care, against dental care for vulnerable seniors in Quebec. That's shameful, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Shefford. If what the Minister is saying were enough, then the FADOC, the AQDR, and the ATDR and several other groups would not be in Ottawa today, and yet they are here today. They're here demanding a 10% increase in old age security for those 74 and under. All seniors deserve the same support as they're all facing the same rising cost of living. Everyone seems to understand that. Seniors do not deserve to be divided into two classes of citizens. It's high time that the Liberals put an end to their age-based discrimination. Will they give C319 a royal recommendation? The Honourable Minister of uh, Seniors and Labour. Mr. Speaker, no party in this House has done as much for seniors in Canada and in Quebec as the Liberal Party of Canada. Despite the opposition of the Conservative Party, the opposition of the Bloc Québécois, because they voted against dental care. They voted against the Guaranteed Income Supplement. They voted against additional housing for vulnerable seniors. But dental care, Mr. Speaker, the Bloc Québécois voted against all of that that I just lifted. Now they're accusing us of not supporting seniors. The Bloc Québécois should apologize to seniors <laughs> and to us. <laughs> oh. Dude, there's going to be an election. Just an instant, madame. Just a moment, please. Just pour vous rappeler, je suis très content de reconnaître l'honorable député. I'm very happy to recognize the honorable member for Shefford for a third time, but I... 100% they're going to vote non-confidence. ...by the chair. The honorable member for Shefford. 
Today is International Day of Older Persons. And on this day, the Bloc Québécois would like to highlight the work of community organizations that support retirees. It is inexcusable that some should be re- deprived of funding under the Age Well at Home program. It is inexcusable that the government is starving our organizations and depriving Quebec seniors of money and services that are rightfully theirs. It's inexcusable that the federal government is getting into a jurisdictional tiff with Quebec at the expense of seniors. Will the federal government finally transfer Quebec its share of funding and stop holding seniors hostage? The Honourable Minister of Labour and Seniors. Mr. Speaker, we are especially proud of the pilot project, Age Well at Home. That is among our government's priorities. We want seniors to age at home and to age independently and live independently. We have the unblocked funding for all provinces. We have sent funding to all provinces. The government of Quebec, though, they need to do their part and then they will get funding. Organizations like Centre Bénévole and Chez Resto Pop in Montreal will then receive their funding, Mr. Speaker. From Leeds, Grenville.